are not prepared. Welcome to another top 5 with Crystal 5 guys. Today we're gonna look at what are the best performing decks after several days in the new Hearthstone expansion. A few decks definitely stand out and they seem to be staples for now and are probably high on the nerf radar list too. So still, be careful to spend your dust if you don't have too much of it. Would be awesome if you drop a like and a subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what I'm doing and I'm gonna keep providing you with good top 5 decks as well as detailed guides for them. Now let's check out the decks. As you can see, two of the decks right now are definitely dominating the meta, and those will be Ram Druid plus Quest Warrior. There's just too much of them, and the results really speak for themselves. So yeah, the first deck on the list again has to be Pirate Warrior, and I'm not gonna go into detail about this one, because I already made a somewhat detailed guide about it, with some games added to it too. The list is pretty much the same as the one I did a guide about, but from what we can see, there are definitely a ton of variations for this list, and all of them have pretty pretty good stats. Some lists opt for two weapons instead of one, which I feel is kind of a bait. I mean, I get it, it's not cool not to draw a card from your first quest step, but in the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if you don't either. So adding in a second weapon in the deck just so you can have something to draw, I don't know, it feels like a bait to me. Other than that, people are running one less of the cargo guard, which is okay I guess, and also one less of the tusk card trawler, so yeah, you can play around with some of the flexible cards and fit in something you feel would work better for your current meta. But other than that, the list remains the same. All in all, for Warrior, Quest Warrior is the best performing one obviously, but also Charge Warrior is still doing well because it actually wins against Quest Warriors. We have Control Warrior also doing pretty decently, but again, if you want fast and simple games, Quest Pirate Warrior is definitely the way to go. Next up, like I said, it has to be Ram Druid, because the stats are just too good. This variant of Ram Druid is opting for a Doomsayer in there, so you can slow down your opponent, so they can't build a board while you clear their current board. A well-timed Doomsayer is definitely gonna buy you a little bit of extra time, so you can start doing your ramp stuff. And another interesting inclusion here is the Smothering Starfish, which I'm assuming the main reason for it would be against those pesky switcheroo priests. But it's also gonna work wonderfully against mech mages, against mech paladins, and all sorts of buffy stuff. You have Jerry Rig in here, which is gonna be drawing your Rafts, or the new buffed Nourish, which is back to 5 mana by the way. You have the new Naga Giants, which are pretty easy to go down to 0 mana, and after that you get to slap them with some Earthen Scales, or you can even do it on the new Miracle Growth, which also tends to be pretty big. For the early game you have the Dozen Kelp Keeper, which actually does get doubled up by your Oracle of Elune, which is a pretty cool interaction, and it definitely is gonna help you stall out games against Tempo and Aggro decks. You also have Kazakhstan as a back plan as well as raid boss anixia and those two really help you stabilize and even close out games switching to a deck with two doomsayers instead of the silence so you can see better stats for the mulligan and as you can see when going first keeping ramp jerry rig and guff would be your best bet the dozen kelp keeper is also pretty good doomsayer works fine and wrath as well but it obviously depends on the matchup naga giant i don't think you want to be keeping it early on but you would rather top deck it after you've actually cast a bunch of spells innervate could be good if you have stuff to innervate into like let's say wildcard guff already and when going second it's kind of the same but also Miracle Growth is also a pretty acceptable key, even though it feels a little bit greedy now, doesn't it? But I guess if you already have Guff plus Innervate, or some ramp, it should be fine. The deck is running 3 legendaries, and it definitely seems to be a deck that might get targeted by the nerfs. Wildcard Guff would be the first one to come to mind honestly, so again, craft with caution. For other good druid decks, you will have to scroll quite a bit down before you start seeing anything other than variations of Rap Druid. And a Conjure Druid supposedly is doing okay, and the stats are actually pretty high for a deck this complex, but the core of the deck is basically Ram Druid again, so there's that as well. There are some variations of Beast Druid also out there, but so far they're not working amazingly well, so be careful. Next on the list, let's talk about Token Demon Hunter, which also has a pretty good sample size and a pretty good win rate to go with it too. It's a pretty fast deck, and it's basically feeding off of the slow Ram Druids right now. You have the good old Battle Fiend in here, which was a pretty good minion back in the day, but now it's basically acceptable. Dread Prism Glaive is also doing pretty good in this one, especially comboed off with Multi Strike, you can get some pretty good clears as well as face damage that way. Feast of Souls got buffed and it only costs 1 mana now, so it is a no-brainer in this one because you have a lot of small stuff that you're happy to kill off. The new Vicious Litter Spear is also a pretty good inclusion because you have a lot of small spells and this tends to do a good amount of chip damage in the early game. 
Wing of Hate gives you some more tokens so you can dispose of them. Battle Swarm Vanguard also gives you a lot of 1-1s. And again, you can combo it with the new multi-strike to get extra 1-1s. Sigil of Summoning is not a bad inclusion as well. Coordinated Strikes for some more rush. Flag Runner really shines here because it's pretty hard to deal with. And you get a lot of small things to kill off for it. Buffer Fish is a basically a no-brainer inclusion in any deck that actually attacks. Wrath Scale Naga, which is the main reason why this deck is called Token Druid, I guess. Drektar so you can fish out a couple of good minions. Flanking maneuvers also feels pretty solid in here and you can use it as good removal as well as extra token stuff and even Kurtrus resets. And we also have the new Bone Glaive, which actually feels better than people anticipated. And yeah, the last card is Kurtris, because you get to do a lot of attacks, and with the small stuff later on, you get to use your hero power quite a lot too. Mulligan-wise, when going first and second, Drektar is always gonna be a great keep. Sigil of Summoning apparently is not bad, as well as Puffer Fist. But you definitely also want to have a good one drop, and the Battle Swarm Vanguard is pretty amazing too. The weapon on one is also pretty good, so you can actually follow up with the Battle Swarm. Multi-Strike feels a little bit too high on the list, but Kurtris is definitely a great keep as well. I would say Flag Runner is not that bad to curve off into as well. When on the coin, again, Drektar, Battle Sworn, and even Kurtris are your top three. The weapon still is pretty good. Multi-Strike here makes a little bit more sense because you are gonna have to clear off the stuff your opponent played first. Your good one-drop minions are still pretty decent. Wings of Hate also apparently are not that bad, so don't be afraid to play them on rank 1 apparently. Sigil of Summoning still decent, and Coordinated Strike not that bad either. Buffer Fist a lot lower here, but I'm not sure that's actually too correct, because you can still use him for some good clear. Overall, this one is not too expensive because Drektar was free, and Kurtris is definitely a no-brainer craft for you if you enjoy Demon Hunter. Naga is from the core set as well, so you don't even have epics to craft for this one, so definitely give this one a go if you enjoy getting vengeance. Other good Demon Hunter decks would be Fell Demon Hunter, but as you can see, the stats are a lot lower than that. Death Rattle Demon Hunter is also doing pretty poorly so far, and Big Demon Hunter ain't too big either. On the number 4 spot, we have Pirate Rogue, with a pretty interesting inclusion people actually took a while to figure out. Plague Scientist, which works amazingly well with your Puffer Fist, but you can also use it on a single target minion to clear something big from the board. But yeah, if you slap it on a Puffer Fist, you actually do AoE poison damage, and that clears the entire opponent board for you. This Pirate Rogue is a bit faster than the rest because you're actually not running scabs either. You have Trox to punish the spell decks, the good cheap pirates including the new one, Amalgam is a no-brainer in all of the tribe decks nowadays, Tuscar so you can dredge up some good cards, Wicked Staffs for Finisher, Cutlass Courier is a pretty amazing card for Rogue as well right now, giving you a lot of extra pirates, the Swordfish is pretty amazing, Edwin actually makes the cut here as well, and you could actually set it up with a well-timed dredge so you know for a fact you will be able to play the next card. A Sharon Vessel ain't too bad either, Krabatoa feels decent as well, and you curve out with Mr. Smite at the end so you can charge off some extra pirate damage, maybe with a Fillet Fighter or some other cheap pirate for some good charge damage. For the Mulligan Guide, there are not enough stats for me to show you right now, but I'm assuming you'd like to be curving out with your cheap stuff. A Sharon Vessel actually seems to be pretty high on the keep list, and you can even make it cheaper with your tradable Blackwater Cutlass. Or you can even use Prep for it too. The Swordfish is also a pretty amazing card to keep. Trog also makes a lot of sense as well. But yeah, these stats feel a bit all over the place, so I'm not sure how good of an idea you can get from it. You can definitely try the deck without Edwin Kingpin, and that's gonna cut down the cost for you a bit. Mr. Smite you should already have, because it was from the mini set, so that leaves you only with Krabatoa, which again, might not be as essential as people might think. There's not really another working archetype for Row right now, even though people are saying that Quest Rogue also still works, but I haven't really tried that, and there's no stats for it either. So yeah, stick with Pirate Rogue for now. And the last deck on the list is again gonna be Mech Mage because it's just too good. I think this is the same list I showed you in the last top 5, so people really have cracked it down pretty fast. The real MVP in this list would be Seafloor Gateway and the Mecha Shark, but you really don't need me to tell you that. From what I hear, people are actually getting baited into trying to do OTKs with the Mecha Shark instead of just overwhelming the opponent with board after board with a lot of medium mechs. Yeah, against some matchups it might make some sense to hold back off so you can really do pull off something like an OTK, but in most cases it's probably just gonna be better for you to play this deck for tempo. And a lot of the cards give you a lot of refill as well, so you shouldn't be running out of gas too much. 
Anyway, for the mulligan, like I said, Seafloor Gateway is just MVP. And the Mecha Shark feels pretty good as well. Deep Runner Engineer would be good for you to discover some extra mechs for ya. Shivering Sources can make your Seafloor Gateway castable even as soon as turn 2. Click Clocker is not a bad mech to keep, but you don't really want to be tempoing it out on turn 1 usually, but you'd rather save it for some extra fuel for your Mecha Shark if you can. Security Automation, again, would be nice for you to put down on the same turn you put the Shark with so you can start clearing up the opponent board while building a pretty big threat as well. For this deck, two legendaries is what you're gonna need, and also the amalgams, which are epics you should be having, no questions asked. The deck definitely feels like it's also might getting a nerf, and Seafloor Gateway and Mecha Shark would be at the top of my list, so be careful crafting too much for it, because it's just a common and a rare. For other good mage decks, you can see there's all kinds of different mech mages, but if you're skilled enough, you can also make Naga Mage work as well. It's definitely not an easy deck to pilot, hence why we're seeing not so good results for it right now. But if you're up for the challenge, you can definitely give it a go. For the decks I didn't mention today, Quest Hunter almost made the list, and there are quite a few new cards included into the new Quest Hunter list, with a bunch of Nagas and new spells as well. Face Hunter is also doing pretty okay, but 55% right now is not that big a percent. Beast Hunter got toned down, and it's not doing as amazing as it used to, so I hope you didn't waste your dust crafting it, thinking it's gonna be OP. With Paladin, Mech Paladin is at the top as well, but also Control Paladin is doing okay too. With Priest, we have Silence Priest, Bless Priest, and Miracle Priest at the top. For Shaman it's still Burn or Rainbow Shaman, which still I'm not exactly sure what's the difference of. And people are still trying to make Murloc Shaman work, but so far with no success. And same goes for Warlock. Murloc Warlock is barely above 50%, and sadly it's far from what people expected it to be. Curse Warlock is also barely 50%. So that's gonna be it for this top 5 guys, hope this helps you figure out what you wanna be playing with in the new Hearthstone expansion. Don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching, and you can be sure I will do my best to make you a better Hearthstone player. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5, and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.